Now to a story that 2 News has been digging into. Wrong way drivers. They're a growing and devastating problem. In the last few months alone, deadly wrong way accidents happen on Highway 75 near Ramona, on the Muskogee Turnpike near Muskogee, and in Tulsa at the I-44 Highway 75 interchange and at Highway 169 and 91st Street South in Tulsa. But as 2 News Oklahoma Problem Solver Pete Knudsen tells us, Oklahoma has a pilot program in the works to try and make a difference before tragedy strikes. A few minutes after midnight on a beautiful fall weekend came a knock on the door. A trooper tells Christy and Jeff Morrow their only daughter, Marissa Renee, had been hit head on by a wrong way drunk driver. It's um, it, it's it's devastating. The day we sat down with Christy to talk about her daughter would have been Marissa's birthday, her milestone 21st birthday. It's that bad. You just never ever want anyone else to know this. To help the family heal during the holidays, Christy put up a remembrance tree. It still stands in the corner of their living room and in the center of their hearts. On each branch, a memory from Marissa's first day to her last. She was a part of our lives for 7,193 days, and I am grateful for every single one of them. Many times since that day in October 2020, Christy says grief has squeezed her heart without mercy for months, not just emotionally, but physically. This is how it must feel, Christy says, to have your heart break. It's just the biggest gaping hole that you can imagine. Taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet. Christy's heart aches even more as she listens to Marissa sing her favorite song. Music is both a blessing and a curse now. Marissa loved to sing at church, at school, at home. It's tough when every single commute to work, you know, brings tears. You know, you're just like, just, you know, you get tired of crying and yet you can't help it. AAA says an average of 500 people die in the 2,000 wrong way driving incidents every year across the country. So the Oklahoma Department of Transportation is rolling out a pilot program to help stop the grieving. It's bad out there and it takes lives, so I'm so excited that someone somehow is taking steps to, to remedy it. That $2.3 million pilot program includes improving signs and striping at four interchanges with confusing configurations all along I-40 between Oklahoma City and the Arkansas State Line. It includes this one at Tiger Road near Henrietta. Here, you'll soon see a new system to detect those people driving the wrong way. It commands their attention. A senior project manager with TAPCO, a company that produces wrong way detection systems, says it includes bright, blinking LED warning signs. Radar and thermal sensors trigger them when a driver enters a wrong way zone. TAPCO says it's especially effective for drunk drivers. It's one of the most valuable um, benefits of LED enhancement. It's very um, very uh, attention grabbing in a sense. The system includes an alert activation zone, a self correction zone, and a confirmation zone. If a wrong way driver doesn't turn around, an alert will be sent out automatically to nearby law enforcement and to message signs warning other drivers. TAPCO says the high tech flashing warning signs alone have reduced wrong way driving incidents from 85 to 98 percent in other parts of the country. Can you really put a, a cost or price tag to the, the loss of life? Um, these, these situations are a national crisis, they're a national issue. This was her 19th birthday. With local impact, with hometown grieving families like the Moros, whose daughter will never celebrate her 21st birthday. She would have been very excited, yeah. So. Happy birthday. Instead, Marissa's friends were remembering her birthday with flowers and a cake and with candles singing at her grave. And I believe, oh, I believe, oh. Pete Knutson, 2 News Oklahoma, Problem Solvers. 
Thank you, Pete. Going in depth tonight on Oklahoma's wrong way driver pilot program. The four test sites along I-40 include that interchange at Tiger Mountain Road near Henrietta, along with the exit you see on this map, 287, 311 and 330. After a few months of testing, the state plans to add the automatic notification portion of the system. Then if it works successfully, the plan is to come up with the money to install the wrong way prevention technology at other problem areas across the state. From Beijing to your backyard, we've got so much more ahead for you tonight on 2 News, the Olympic Center and your full weather forecast next. Instead of taking a long planned dream trip to Disney in Orlando, COVID stranded a Locust Grove boy and his grandparents at home. They were given a $760 voucher for their canceled plane tickets, but that voucher was apparently hacked. When I went to try to get it, they said, someone else has already redeemed this. That family says they tried since November to get another voucher for flights from Tulsa International. I'm 2 News Oklahoma problem solver Pete Knudsen. Tomorrow morning at 6.30, find out what the odds are of that family getting their hundreds of dollars back so they can take that dream trip to Disney. Now, your 2 News Oklahoma weather, sponsored by Executive Homes. Well, this is a first for me in prime time, guys. I've you know, 21, this will be my 21st year in television here in Tulsa, and I've never done a weathercast at 9.45. Make it a good one. Make it a good one. Caden, have you done sports at 945? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I've been really... keeping track of these things like you were. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, what about you? No, can't remember. Okay. It's a first for all of us. So this is great. Welcome. I'm Mike, yeah. and we'll be checking with <laughs> Caden and Karen here in just a few minutes. All right, so there is a risk for severe weather. On the serious note, there is a risk for severe storms that potentially exist for a few isolated tornadoes tonight. I'm going to walk you through future track radar here in just a few minutes. Area green, that's a low risk. In the area in brown, that's slightly elevated risk. The risk isn't really high, but there is a risk nonetheless. And nonetheless, and that's why you need to keep your Storm Shield app on overnight tonight. If there's a warning issue, it will actually uh, voice call it out to you. That's what I do it's when I sleep at night. It says either thunderstorm warning, and then I can get up and go, wow, okay, got to maybe rush into work. Now, as we look at dual Doppler right now, Showers and thunderstorms in southeast, so southeast Oklahoma, northwest Arkansas, and then a few thunderstorms north central portions of the state. None of this is severe. The main severe weather threat will hold off until later uh, tonight, about 3 to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, we do have a winter storm warning in effect for Osage County, and mainly that's northern Osage County, so the Kansas is going to see the bulk of the wintry precip or the the major wintry precip. So let's walk you through future track radar. This is again at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. Notice the storms out to the west of us. Those are going to push east and these could be QLCS type tornadoes, meaning that they'd be little spin ups within the line and those are going to continue to track to the northeast and be out of here by 9 a.m. Behind it, some wintry precip, mainly I-44 and to the north, very light wintry precip. As far as totals, we're looking at maybe a dusting of snowfall in Tulsa, maybe an inch in Bartlesville, some accumulations in southeastern Kansas. The further south you go, the less likely you are to see an accumulating snowfall. Outside right now on our Wade's RV weather camera network, we have mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures mild at this hour. It's breezy as well with southeast winds, north winds just to the north of us. Those are moving to the south. So south winds at 15, 63 degrees after climbing to 71 today. Now, once we get rid of all this, the weekend looks amazing. Beautiful weather for your Saturday and Sunday. I'm excited. All right, then it turns colder again with the potential for more winter weather by the middle of next week with temperatures falling down the 30s to near 40 degrees. I guess I can say, Mom, I made it. I'm on prime time. <laughs> Great deal. And now we are live from the Ferguson Kia Olympic Center. We thank you for joining us here tonight. I'm Karen Larson. And I'm Kate McFarland. Final chance for Michaela Schifrin, the two-time gold medalist who came into these games with the greatest of expectations, unable to even finish in her two best events, the slaloms, looking for redemption in the combined tonight. That's right. Sheeran off to a or Schifrin, I should say, off to a good start on Again, borrowed ski. She finishes fifth in the downhill portion, about a half second back of the lead. The she is a serious metal contender as they head turn, into the slalom later today in Beijing. Low, yeah, going no for her fourth career Olympic medal. Coming up right after the news, it's women's hockey. The gold medal game once again, USA versus Canada. 